Boko Haram Insurgency, Wikipedia article audio Northern Cameroon, Southeast Niger Ongoing Background Nigerian Statehood Multinational Joint Task Force Local Militias, Foreign Mercenaries United States Boko Haram, ISIL Early Religious Conflict in Nigeria Boko Haram Ansaru, supported by Made It Seen Muhammad Abuari, Good Luck Jonathan, Umar Yaradua, Ibrahim Guidam, Ali Moda Sheriff, Kashim Shedima, Isa Yugida, Paul Baya, Idris Debi, Abubakar Sheko, Abu Musab Al Barnai, Malam Sunni Umaru, Mohammed Yusuf, Nigerian Army, 130000 Active Frontline Personnel, 32,000 Active Reserve Personnel, Nigeria Police Force, 371,800 Officers, Multinational Joint Task Force, 7,500 Active Personnel, Cameroonian Armed Forces, 20,000 Active Personnel. Establishment of Sharia ISIL, 7,0010,000 Blasphemy and Apostasy 51,567 plus total killed Demographic Balance The Boko Haram insurgency began in 2009 when the jihadist rebel group Boko Haram started an armed rebellion against the government of Nigeria. In 2012, tensions within Boko Haram resulted in gradual split of the group between Salafist conservative faction led by Abu Usmatul al-Ansari, and the more dominant, violent faction led by Abu Bakr Sheko. By 2015, Part of the group split into Al-Qaeda-affiliated Ansaru, and Sheko's faction became ISIL's West Africa branch. In 2013, over 1,000 people died as a result of the conflict. The violence escalated dramatically in 2014, with 10,849 deaths. In 2014, the insurgency spread to neighboring Cameroon, Chad, and Niger thus becoming a major regional conflict. In 2015, a coalition offensive forced Boko Haram to retreat into the Sambisa forest. The insurgency took place within the context of long-standing issues of religious violence between Nigeria's Muslim and Christian communities. Boko Haram has been called the world's deadliest terrorist group, in terms of the number of people it has killed. History Nigeria was amalgamated both the Northern and Southern Protectorate in 1914, only about a decade after the defeat of the Sokoto Caliphate and other Islamic states by the British which were to constitute much of Northern Nigeria. Sir Frederick Luggard assumed office as governor of both protectorates in 1912. The aftermath of the First World War saw Germany lose its colonies, one of which was Cameroon, to French, Belgian and British mandates. Cameroon was divided in French and British parts, the latter of which was further subdivided into southern and northern parts. Following a plebiscite in 1961, the southern Cameroons elected to rejoin French Cameroon, while the northern Cameroons opted to join Nigeria, a move which added to Nigeria's already large northern Muslim population. The territory made up much of what is now northeastern Nigeria, and a large part of the areas affected by the insurgency. Religious conflict in Nigeria goes as far back as 1953. 
The Igbo massacre of 1966 in the north that followed the counter-coup of the same year had as a dual cause the Igbo officers' coup and pre-existing tensions between the Igbos and the local Muslims. This was a major factor in the Biafran secession and the resulting civil war. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, there was a major Islamic uprising led by Maidatsin and his followers, Yan Tatsun that led to several thousand deaths. After Maidatsin's death in 1980, the movement continued some five years more. In the same decade the erstwhile military ruler of Nigeria, General Ibrahim Bey Banjida enrolled Nigeria in the organization of the Islamic Conference. This was a move which aggravated religious tensions in the country, particularly among the Christian community. In response, some in the Muslim community pointed out that certain other African member states have smaller proportions of Muslims, as well as Nigeria's diplomatic relations with the Holy See. Since the return of democracy to Nigeria in 1999, Sharia has been instituted as a main body of civil and criminal law in nine Muslim majority and in some parts of three Muslim plurality states, when then Zamfara state governor Ahmed Rufay Sani began the push for the institution of Sharia at the state level of government. This was followed by controversy as to the would-be legal status of the non-Muslims in the Sharia system. A spate of Muslim Christian riots soon emerged. 2009 Boko Haram Uprising In the primarily Islamic northern states of Nigeria, a variety of Muslim groups and populations exist, who favor the nationwide introduction of Sharia law. The demands of these populations have been at least partially upheld by the Nigerian federal government in 12 states, firstly in Zamfara state in 1999. The implementation has been widely attributed as being due to the insistence of Zamfara state governor Ahmed Rufay Sani. 2010 Resurgence the death sentences of Amin Alawal and Saifi Yahusaini attracted international attention to what many saw as the harsh regime of these laws. These sentences were later overturned. The first execution was carried out in 2002. Expansion of conflict into neighboring Cameroon, Chad, and Niger. Coalition offensive in 2015 forces Boko Haram to retreat into the Sambisa forest. Twelve out of Nigeria's 36 states have Sunni Islam as the dominant religion. In 1999, those states chose to have Sharia courts as well as customary courts. A Sharia court may treat blasphemy as deserving of several punishments up to, and including, execution. In many predominantly Muslim states, conversion from Islam to another religion is illegal and often a capital offense. According to a Nigerian study on demographics and religion, Muslims make up 50.5% of the population. Muslims mainly live in the north of the country, the majority of the Nigerian Muslims are Sunnis. Christians are the second largest religious group and make up 48.2% of the population. They predominate in the central and southern part of the country. Nigeria, Cameroon, Chad, Niger For reasons of avoiding political controversy, questions of religion were foregone in the 2006 Nigerian census. 2011 2012 2013 Government Offensive 2014 Shabak Kidnapping Boko Haram conducted its operations more or less peacefully during the first seven years of its existence. That changed in 2009 when the Nigerian government launched an investigation into the group's activities following reports that its members were arming themselves.
Prior to that the government reportedly repeatedly ignored warnings about the increasingly militant character of the organization, including that of a military officer. Wile Agar Bafrakia When the government came into action, several members of the group were arrested in Bachi, sparking deadly clashes with Nigerian security forces which led to the deaths of an estimated 700 people. During the fighting with the security forces Boko Haram fighters reportedly used fuel-laden motorcycles and bows with poison arrows to attack a police station. The group's founder and then leader Mohamed Yusuf was also killed during this time while still in police custody. After Yusuf's killing, Abubakar Sheko became the leader and held this position in January 2015. After the killing of M. Yusuf, the group carried out its first terrorist attack in Borno in January 2010. It resulted in the killing of four people. Since then, the violence has only escalated in terms of both frequency and intensity. In September 2010, a Bachi prison break freed more than 700 Boko Haram militants, replenishing their force. On May 29, 2011, a few hours after Good Luck Jonathan was sworn in as president, several bombings purportedly by Boko Haram killed 15 and injured 55. On June 16, Boko Haram claimed to have conducted the Abuja police headquarters bombing, the first known suicide attack in Nigeria. Two months later the United Nations building in Abuja was bombed, signifying the first time that Boko Haram attacked an international organization. In December, it carried out attacks in Damaturu killing over a hundred people, subsequently clashing with security forces in December, resulting in at least 68 deaths. Two days later on Christmas Day, Boko Haram attacked several Christian churches with bomb blasts and shootings. Islamist insurgency, communal conflicts in Nigeria, herder farmer conflicts in Nigeria, Niger Delta conflict, 2016 Biafra conflict. June 15, 2011 also marked the start of a federal government-sanctioned military effort to counter the growing threat of Boko Haram's insurgency. With 21 Armored Brigade of the Nigerian Army as its nucleus, Joint Task Force Operation Restore Order marked the start of the Army's lengthy counter-insurgency campaign against Boko Haram. The campaign has gone through several phases and has greatly escalated in scale, capacity, components, and stakeholders, since that time. Results, however, have sometimes been mixed and the army has been criticized for being too kinetic in its coin. In January 2012, Abubakar Sheko, a former deputy to Yusuf, appeared in a video posted on YouTube. According to Reuters, Sheko took control of the group after Yusuf's death in 2009. Authorities had previously believed that Sheko died during the violence in 2009. By early 2012, the group was responsible for over 900 deaths. On March 8, 2012, a small special boat service team and the Nigerian army attempted to rescue two hostages, Chris McManus and Franco Lamalinara, being held in Nigeria by members of the Boko Haram terrorist organization loyal to Al-Qaeda. The two hostages were killed before or during the rescue attempt. All the hostage takers were reportedly killed. In May 2013, Nigerian government forces launched an offensive in the Borno region in an attempt to dislodge Boko Haram fighters after a state of emergency was called on May 14. The state of emergency, which was still in force in May 2014, applied to the states of Borno, Yob, and Adamawa in northeastern Nigeria. 
The offensive had initial success, but the Boko Haram rebels were able to regain their strength. In July, Boko Haram massacred 42 students in Yob, bringing the school year to an early end in the state. On August 5, 2013 Boko Haram launched dual attacks on Bama and Malam Fatori, leaving 35 dead. 2014 Joss Bombings On April 15, 2014, terrorists abducted about 276 female students from a college in Chibok in Borno State. The abduction was widely attributed to Boko Haram. It was reported that the group had taken the girls to neighboring Cameroon and Chad where they were to be sold into marriages at a price below a dollar. The abduction of another eight girls was also reported later. These kidnappings raised public protests, with some protesters holding placards bearing the Twitter tag number Bring Back Our Girls which had caught international attention. The Guardian reported that the British Royal Air Force conducted Operation Turus in response the Chibok schoolgirls kidnapping by Boko Haram in Nigeria in April 2014. A source involved with the operation told the observer that the girls were located in the first few weeks of the RAF mission, and that we offered to rescue them, but the Nigerian government declined, this was because it viewed any action to be taken as a national issue, and for it to be resolved by Nigerian intelligence and security services. The source added that the girls were then tracked by the aircraft as they were dispersed into progressively smaller groups over the following months. Several countries pledged support to the Nigerian government and to help their military with intelligence gathering on the whereabouts of the girls and the operational camps of Boko Haram. On May 20, 2014, a total of two bombs in the city of Jos, Plateau State, Nigeria, were detonated, resulting in the deaths of at least 118 people and the injury of more than 56 others. The bombs detonated 30 minutes apart, one at a local marketplace at approximately 3 o'clock and the second in a parking lot next to a hospital at approximately 3.30, where rescuers responding to the first accident were killed. Though no group or individual has claimed responsibility, the attacks have been attributed to Boko Haram. First responders were unable to reach the scenes of the accidents, as thousands of people were fleeing the scene in the opposite direction. The bombs had been positioned to kill as many people as possible, regardless of religion, which differed from previous attacks in which non-Muslims were targeted. The bombers were reported to have used a back-to-back -back blast tactic, in which an initial bomb explodes at a central location and another explodes a short time later with intent to kill rescue workers working to rescue the wounded. Escalation in Fighting 2015 Counter-Offensive Against Boko Haram American Military Support Starting in late 2014, Boko Haram militants attacked several Nigerian towns in the north and captured them. This prompted the Nigerian government to launch an offensive, and with the help of Chad, Niger, and Cameroon, they have recaptured many areas that were formerly under the control of Boko Haram. In late 2014, Boko Haram seized control of Bama according to the town's residents. In December 2014, it was reported that people too elderly to flee Gwoza local government area were being rounded up and taken to two schools where the militants opened fire on them. Over 50 elderly people in Bama were killed. A gory video was released of insurgents shooting over a hundred civilians in a school dormitory in the town of Bama. Between January 3 and January 7, 2015, Boko Haram attacked the town of Baga and killed up to 2,000 people, 
perhaps the largest massacre by Boko Haram. On January 10, 2015 a bomb attack took place at the Monday market in Maiduguri, killing 19 people. The city is considered to be at the heart of the Boko Haram insurgency. In the early hours of January 25, Boko Haram launched a major assault on the city. On January 26, CNN reported that the attack on Maiduguri by hundreds of gunmen had been repelled, but the nearby town of Munguno was captured by Boko Haram. The Nigerian army claimed to have successfully repelled another attack on Maiduguri on January 31, 2015. Starting in late January 2015, a coalition of military forces from Nigeria, Chad, Cameroon, and Niger began a counterinsurgency campaign against Boko Haram. On February 4, the Chad army killed over 200 Boko Haram militants. Soon afterwards, Boko Haram launched an attack on the Cameroonian town of Fotokal, killing 81 civilians. 13 Chadian soldiers and 6 Cameroonian soldiers. On February 17, 2015 the Nigerian military retook Munguno in a coordinated air and ground assault. 2016 On March 7, 2015, Boko Haram's leader Abubakar Sheko pledged allegiance to the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant via an audio message posted on the organization's Twitter account. Nigerian Army spokesperson Sami Usman Kyokashika said the pledge was a sign of weakness and that Sheko was like a drowning man. That same day, five suicide bomb blasts left 54 dead and 143 wounded. On March 12, 2015, ISIL's spokesman Abu Muhammad al-Adnani released an audio tape in which he welcomed the Pledge of Allegiance, and described it as an expansion of the group's caliphate to West Africa. On March 24, 2015, residents of Damasak, Nigeria said that Boko Haram had taken more than 400 women and children from the town as they fled from coalition forces. On March 27 the Nigerian army captured Gwoza, which was believed to be the location of Boko Haram headquarters. On election day, March 28, 2015, Boko Haram extremists killed 41 people, including a legislator to discourage hundreds from voting. In March 2015, Boko Haram lost control of the northern Nigerian towns of Bama and Gwoza to the Nigerian army. The Nigerian authorities said that they had taken back 11 of the 14 districts previously controlled by Boko Haram. In April, four Boko Haram camps in the Sambisa forest were overrun by the Nigerian military who freed nearly 300 females. Boko Haram forces were believed to have retreated to the Mandaram Mountains, along the Nigeria-Cameroon border. On March 16, the Nigerian army said that it had recaptured Bama. On March 27, 2015, the day before the Nigerian presidential election, the Nigerian army announced that it had recaptured the town of Gwoza from Boko Haram. By April 2015, the Nigerian military was reported to have retaken most of the areas previously controlled by Boko Haram in northeastern Nigeria, except for the Sambisa forest. In May 2015, the Nigerian military announced that they had released about 700 women from camps in Sambisa Forest. In August 2015, it was reported that over 1,000 deaths had occurred since the inauguration of the new administration. On October 28, 2015, it was announced that Nigerian troops have rescued 338 people from Boko Haram near the group's Sambisa forest stronghold. 
Of those rescued, 192 were children and 138 were women. In December 2015 Muhammad Abuari, the president of Nigeria, claimed that Boko Haram was technically defeated and it was reported that 1,000 women had been rescued from Boko Haram in January 2016. In early October 2015, the U.S. military deployed 300 troops to Cameroon, with the approval of the Cameroonian government, with the primary mission of providing intelligence support to local forces, and conducting reconnaissance flights. The troops are also overseeing a program to transfer American military vehicles to the Cameroonian army to aid in their fight against Islamist militants. 2017 2018 As of May 2016, U.S. personnel are involved in drone operations from Gurwa to help provide intelligence in the region to assist local forces. There are additional drone operations based out of Niger. U.S. Army soldiers in Cameroon are also providing IED awareness training to the country's infantry forces. In March 2016, Boko Haram was reported to have used islands in Lake Chad as bases. Other Issues On August 31, 2016, Major General Lucky Irabor stated that the militants now only controlled a few villages and towns near Lake Chad and in Sambisa Forest. He further stated that the military expected recapturing the final strongholds of the group within weeks. Possible Causes Human Rights International Context Literature On December 24, 2016, President Muhammad Abuari declared that Boko Haram had been ousted from their last stronghold in the Sambisa Forest, effectively reducing Boko Haram to an insurgent force. This victory left Boko Haram without any territorial holdings, however, Boko Haram still maintains an extensive ability to carry out attacks. On January 7, 2017, a group of Boko Haram militants attacked a Nigerian army base in Yob State, killing five soldiers. In response, the Nigerian army launched retaliatory strikes and killed 15 militants. On January 17, 2017, a Nigerian Air Force jet accidentally bombed a refugee camp near the Cameroonian border in Ran, Borno State, mistaking it for a Boko Haram encampment. The airstrike left 115 people dead. On March 18, 2017, at least six people were killed and 16 wounded after four female suicide bombers blew themselves up on the outskirts of Maiduguri city. On March 22, 2017, the Nigerian Department of State Services announced that a suspected member of Boko Haram had been arrested in northeastern Yob State. The suspect confessed details of a plot to attack the American and British embassies, and other Western targets in Abuja. The DSS also later announced that between 25 and March 26, 2017, five suspected members of Boko Haram had been arrested, thus thwarting the plot. On April 2, 2017, the Nigerian military began what it said was its final offensive to retake Boko Haram's last strongholds. On May 17, 2017, the Nigerian army reported that it had arrested about 126 suspected Boko Haram terrorists at the internally displaced persons camp in Dambo, Borno State. In September 2017, Boko Haram militants kidnapped about 40 young adults, women, and children and killed 18 in the town of Banki, 
130 km southeast of Maiduguri, Borno State, on the border of Nigeria and Cameroon. Boko Haram was reported to have killed 380 people between April and September 2017 in the Lake Chad area. About 57% of all schools in Borno State were closed due to the Boko Haram insurgency, affecting the education of about 3 million children. The North consisted of Sahelian states that had long Islamic character. These were feudal and conservative with rigid caste and class systems and large slave populations. Furthermore, the North failed until 1936 to outlaw slavery. Possibly due to geographical factors, many southern tribes, particularly those on the coast, had made contact with Europeans, unlike the North, which was engaged mainly with the Arab world and not Europe. Due to the system of indirect rule, the British were happy to pursue a limited course of engagement with the emirs. The traditionalist northern elites were skeptical of Western education, at the same time their southern counterparts often sent their sons abroad to study. In time, a considerable developmental and educational gap grew between the south and the north. Even in 2014, Northern states still lagged behind in literacy, school attendance, and educational achievement. Chris Kwaja, a Nigerian university lecturer and researcher, asserted in 2011 that religious dimensions of the conflict have been misconstrued as the primary driver of violence when, in fact, disenfranchisement and inequality are the root causes. Nigeria he pointed out, has laws giving regional political leaders the power to qualify people as indigenes or not. It determines whether citizens can participate in politics, own land, obtain a job, or attend school. The system is abused widely to ensure political support and to exclude others. Muslims have been denied indigeneship certificates disproportionately often. Nigerian opposition leader Buba Galatama said in 2012, what is really a group engaged in class warfare is being portrayed in government propaganda as terrorists in order to win counter-terrorism assistance from the West. The conflict has seen numerous human rights abuses conducted by the Nigerian security forces, in an effort to control the violence as well as their encouragement of the formation of numerous vigilante groups. Amnesty International accused the Nigerian government of human rights abuses after 950 suspected Boko Haram militants died in detention facilities run by Nigeria's military joint task force in the first half of 2013. As of early 2016, according to Amnesty International, at least 8,000 detainees have died in detention facilities operated by the security services. Furthermore, the Nigerian government has been accused of incompetence and in supplying misinformation about events in more remote areas. Boko Haram has kidnapped several young schoolgirls in Borno, physically, psychologically and sexually abusing them using and selling them as sex slaves and slash or brides of forced marriages with their fighters. The most famous example being the Chibok kidnapping in 2014. In addition to kidnapping child brides, Human Rights Watch has stated that Boko Haram uses child soldiers, including 12-year-olds. According to an anonymous source working on peace talks with the group, up to 40% of the fighters in the group are underage soldiers. The group has forcibly converted non-Muslims to Islam, and is also known to assign non-Kanuris on suicide missions. The insurgents can be seen in the context of other conflicts nearby, for example in the north of Mali. The Boko Haram leadership has international connections to Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghrib, Al-Shabaab, 
the Movement for Unity and Jihad in West Africa, Mokhtar Belmokhtar S factions, and other militant groups outside Nigeria. In 2014, Nigerian President, Good luck Jonathan even went so far as calling Boko Haram Al-Qaeda in West Africa. By 2012, attacks by Nigerian Islamist militias on targets beyond Nigeria's borders were still limited, and should not be confused with the activities of other groups. Despite this, there were concerns that conflict could spread to Nigeria's neighbors, especially Cameroon where it existed at a relatively low level until 2014, subsequently escalating considerably. It should also be noted there are combatants from neighboring Chad and Niger. In 2015, Boko Haram swore allegiance to ISIL. On May 17, 2014, the presidents of Benin, Chad, Cameroon, Nigeria, and Niger met for a summit in Paris and agreed to combat Boko Haram on a coordinated basis, sharing in particular surveillance and intelligence gathering. Good luck Jonathan and Chadian counterpart, Idris Deby have both declared total war on Boko Haram. Western nations, including Britain, France, Israel, and the United States had also pledged support including technical expertise and training. The New York Times reported in March 2015 that hundreds of private military contractors from South Africa and other countries are playing a decisive role in Nigeria's military campaign operating attack helicopters and armored personnel carriers and assisting in the planning of operations.